There are people who do not want you to have kids. They've started a really well done website. It's so beautiful and ugly. The images on it are stunning and gross. Their message, stop having kids, well, okay, that's a choice, but their language. Did you know that the best way to not go to hell is to never be born? Did you know that the number one act of cruelty you can undertake is to have children? Did you know that there is absolutely no way to explain any form of having children if it's not purely selfish? Did you know that? Look at this first image. Stop having kids. The best way to avoid hell is to never be born. Well, the best way to avoid heaven is to never be born. The best way to not spend eternity with God Almighty is to never be born. Is this what they want? Yeah. I think it is what they want. And if you go through the site some more, some of their propaganda, again, it's so, so well done. Look at the beautiful imagery. There's an unconscionable amount of needless suffering, injustice, and death in the world. Birth serves as a catalyst for all of it. We aren't directly stopping people. Listen, we aren't directly stopping people in any way from having kids. We believe that all humans should voluntarily stop creating more. All humans should voluntarily stop creating more humans, not that all humans should be forced to stop creating more humans. We advocate for abstaining from procreation as much as possible in order to take care of who we already have. We seek to normalize not having kids by respectful means that honor bodily autonomy and individuality. Giving away free condoms to spring breakers in Fort Lauderdale, Florida and spreading a positive message. We aren't against making love, we're against making babies. There is nothing loving about gambling with someone's life and making more of the cruelest species ever to exist. Now, yes, human beings have an awareness of what we're doing. God gave us brains that can understand, and he gave us morality we can choose to follow or not follow. He gave us rules on how to treat one another. That's all true, but cruelest species? Cruel only because we know what we're doing. And again, is it cruel to create a movement that says to kids, you should not be wanted. The people at Politico notice something, and you'll see this alignment. StopHavingKids.org says stop having kids, and the Politico writes a piece. The far right is so obsessed with making babies, they just held a whole conference about it. There's so many layers of irony and hypocrisy in all of this. In this piece, they uncover this event put on by this guy named Kevin Dolan. And later on, they go tell us that Kevin Dolan is a very, very scary racist individual. Now, see, the media is going to have to actually give us examples of the racism because we no longer trust them or anyone who's really thinking trusts them. Kevin Dolan, this is part of his opening speech at this terrible far-right campaign to explode the population. Good afternoon. Welcome to the NATO conference. I'm Kevin Dolan. We're here to solve a problem that will define the next century. In our lifetime, in our children's lifetime, every government, every culture, every belief system, and every family on earth will pass through a bottleneck, bottleneck tighter than the Black Death, predicated on one question. Will your children have children of their own? It doesn't matter if you already have kids, if you don't have kids, if you hate kids. If you have a 401k or a mortgage or a social security card or a checking account, this question is going to impact your life in a very direct way. The entire global financial system the value of your money and almost every asset you might buy with money is defined by leverage, which means this value is defined, dependent on growth. Every country in the developed world and most countries in the developing world face long-term population decline at a scale that makes that growth impossible to maintain, which means we are sitting on the bubble of all bubbles. Not just a temporary overheating of home construction, but a permanent oversupply, like the kind you find in cities like Detroit. Not just tech stocks, but the entire equities market. Not just a handful of cities gutted of their tax base and going bankrupt, but thousands of them, and then sovereign bankruptcies. It's an everything bubble. Even so, you may say, well, it's a bubble. So be it. If it pops, then there's a correction and we move on. But in the aftermath of a collapse like this, the shrinking number of productive workers have to support a growing number of older, sicker people, which in turn accelerates the economic pressures that make it difficult to start families. 
This problem isn't self-correcting, at least not within your lifetime. It gets worse as it gets worse. Now, I was curious because this plan, this is the politicos, this is the actual headline. The far right's campaign to explode the population behind the scenes at the first NATO conference, where a motley audience is throwing out the idea of winning converts to their cause and trying to make their own instead. Written by Gabby DeVale, a reporter whose work focuses on immigration, surveillance, and the far right. It's absolutely a far right idea to have kids. The threat, this is from Gabby's piece. The threat we are told here this weekend is existential, biological, epoch-defining. Economies will fail, civilizations will, civilizations will fall, and it will all happen because people aren't having enough babies. Now, he didn't say it will all happen because of that at all. He said that will precipitate it. And then she quotes what we just heard from Kevin Dolan. The entire global financial system, value of your money and every asset you might buy with it, is defined by leverage, which means value depends on growth. Is that not true? The changes we've seen in our society have not been wrought by liberal democracy. They've been wrought by bureaucratic fiat. They've been wrought by going around the voters. They've been wrought by technocratic health so-called professionals. They've been wrought and paid for by pharma. The out-and-out out changes have been anything but democratic. So this have kids is a dastardly idea tied to racism and white supremacy from the very, very beginning. The people at StopHavingKids.org, beautiful, beautiful website. You can see here in this image if you're on the video service. Be fruitful and multiply? Learn why the Bible doesn't require followers to proliferate the human species. Be fruitful and multiply. A common go-to justification Christians have for procreation is the phrase, be fruitful and multiply. One of the most famous sayings from the Bible. This saying comes from the book of Genesis and concerns the first two humans, Adam and Eve. The full quote reads, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on earth. This message promoting natalism appears elsewhere in the book of Genesis as well such as when God is speaking to Noah and his sons after the flood. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number. Multiply on earth and increase upon it. Despite the beliefs of some Christians on this topic, humans have been quite fruitful already. We have over 8 billion people currently living on this planet. No continent on earth has a shortage of humans. The vast majority of land that exists today is inhabited by humans and domesticated animals such as chickens, pigs, cows, who are controlled from birth to the deliberately inflicted death. Free living beings with true freedom, bodily autonomy, and self-determination are sadly today's minority. Pause. Wait, so most people are in slavery? No. Is that true about the land mass? No. And then we get to their assessment of the Bible. Further on in this. In the Bible, the Christian God does not state that all humans should procreate or that humans should procreate endlessly. No one's procreating endlessly. It doesn't work that way. The Bible also doesn't mention anything about it being sinful or an insult to the creator to live a life without adding to the human population. In fact, the Christian savior figure, Jesus, never had kids, and he wasn't stigmatized or considered to be sinful for a singlehood and non-parent status. Pause. He's the father of the world. He's one of three personalities in the triune God, the Holy Spirit and God the Father, Jesus Christ, there from the beginning. He is a parent. He's your parent. When the Bible was written and the Christian God was voicing his desire for people to proliferate mankind, there weren't millions upon millions of babies, children, and teenagers in desperate need of safe, loving, stable, and nurturing homes in healing like we have in modern-day reality. There wasn't? Wait, so the Babylonian Empire didn't happen and kids weren't walked through fire? They weren't tossed into volcanoes or sacrificed in insane sexual fantasy, sex cult, prostitution? Yes, they were. Countless young humans are currently languishing and living trauma-filled, undesirable lives and being set up for lifetime failure, usually at no fault of their own, while the majority of humans all around them continue to prioritize creating their own flesh and blood kin instead of helping those who, um, in need who already exist with actual inherent value, needs, desires, interests, and feelings. Does that sound loving to you? What does God word, God's word tell us? I mean, they quoted some, so why don't we? Because it's one thing to look at the Bible as an object of scorn, which they clearly do. Another, as the living, complete, inerrant word of God. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. And to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true and righteous holiness. God considers human beings his masterpiece. Is eight billion too many? God's still allowing it, so not in his eyes. If it becomes too many, God could stop that, couldn't he? And he hasn't. There's a common denominator in these groups. It's hypocrisy. People complaining about kids are themselves alive. People complaining about this event to encourage people to have children are not complaining about the importing of children because the thing is never the thing. 